Not all characters are visible, or at any rate they don't appear on the screen like the characters A and B, though their effects may be visible. For example, you can't see a new line character, but its effect is to display a new line on screen. You can't see a tab character, but its effect is to print a big gap, a tab, on screen. I'm Hugh, and you are watching another lesson in my Learn to Program course. In many programming languages, we can embed non-printing characters into strings. In c -sharp, Java, and some other languages, a new line character is entered like this. And a tab is entered like this. When the program is run, this is what's shown. Now, remember the ASCII table I showed back in the lesson a while ago about characters and strings? Well, this shows the numeric codes of some of the most common characters we use in our programs. Some of these codes represent alphanumeric characters, such as A to Z, or 0 to 9. Other codes represent characters such as at signs, dollars, percents, punctuation, and mathematical operators. But what about these? Some of these characters are a bit special. They include something called null. In c -sharp and Java, null might not be interesting to us very much, but in the C language, the null character is very important indeed, as it marks the end of a string. In a string, I enter null as backslash zero. In c -sharp, C and Java, some special characters can be put into strings using one-letter codes after a backslash. This is the Microsoft documentation which lists the codes available in c -sharp. Notice there is even a backspace character, backslash b, and that moves back one character in a string. Here I enter three backspaces. And this is the result. I have in effect backspaced three characters back in this string. Then these three characters are printed. Now many of these special characters are mainly of historical interest. They were used more often when computers printed output onto rolls of paper rather than displayed output on a screen, as we do now. So we probably won't use them much in our own programs. But we definitely need to know about the new line or line feed character which inserts a line break. And also we need to know about the carriage return which will move to the start of a line, just like the carriage return on an old mechanical typewriter. The way in which backslash n and backslash r are used varies according to where they are used. For example, they may behave differently when you are displaying output at a command prompt and when you are using certain types of visual component for editing text. Sometimes backslash n on its own is fine, but often you'll need to use a carriage return plus a line feed like this. As special characters are entered using one letter codes after a backslash character, that leaves the problem of displaying the backslash character itself. Look, this, it won't work. A backslash followed by a space, as here, is an unrecognized escape sequence. In fact, the solution to this problem is really simple. If you want to display a backslash in a string, you can do so by putting another backslash in front of it. But there's another problem. What if I want to display double quotes in a string, like this? The problem here is that double quotes are string delimiters. They mark the start and the end of a string. So my compiler thinks this looks as though the quotation mark here marks the end of the string. But you've probably already guessed the solution to that. If we want to display a double quote in a string, we once again put a backslash in front of it. So even though there are now three backslashes in a row here, only one is displayed. This backslash precedes the backslash character here, which lets me display it when I write the string to the console. And then this backslash precedes the double quote character, letting me display that. The examples I've shown here are in C-sharp, but the same problems and solutions apply to Java and also to many other languages. When we use a backslash character before some other special character, we say we are escaping that character. A 
and these are called escape sequences. Now, in the next lesson, I'll briefly go over what we've already learnt in this course about variables and data types. That lesson will be a bit different from the ones that we've done so far. It'll be a hands-on lesson. It's going to guide you through some simple exercises to make sure you understand the topics that I've discussed. Incidentally, if you're learning Java or C-sharp and you want a complete project to write, you may also want to follow my course on programming adventure games. Whereas this course is more theoretical, it describes the activity of programming and the features of programming in a broad and general way, my adventure game course is more hands-on and it explains how to write all the C-sharp or Java code that you need to create an exploring style text adventure. If you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button and also click the bell to be notified whenever I upload new lessons.